Hi, my name is Dana Brower. I'm with Elamisha LLC. Today, we'll be talking about commercial kitchen pitfalls. Um, this session is brought to you by Frenchtown Neighborhood Improvement Association. Working in a commercial kitchen can be challenging. Not being prepared can make or break businesses in many ways. A business owner would benefit greatly from having finances in order, having staff properly trained, and a standard operating procedure, an SOP, in place, just to name a few. Before you begin um, working in your commercial kitchen, as with all businesses, you should make sure that your paperwork is in order. Operating unregulated, unregulated businesses can lead to suspension, having your license revert, revoked, or permanent closure of your business. You should make sure that you have an EIN already from the Internal Revenue Service. You should be registered with the Florida Department of excuse me, the Florida Department of Corporations, um, permitted with one of the following agencies: the Florida Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services, the Florida Department of Business and Professional Regulations, or the Florida Department of Health. If you are hiring employees, business owners are required to pay specific uh, payroll taxes and um, uh, workers' comp. So you should be registered with the Florida Department of Revenue, um, the Florida Department of Children and Families, and workers' comp, the Florida Department of uh, Financial Services. Number two pitfall, not being properly insured. Most businesses are required to carry general liability insurance. Reach out to your local agent, talk to um, your agent about your specific business, what your business needs are, so that your, po your policy is customized to fit your specific needs. Number three, not having a financial plan. Having your finances in order is imperative to the success of your business. Often business, businesses do not show profits overnight. A business owner should be prepared to financially support the growth of a new business for at least two years. How will you, fu how will you fund your startup? How, how, how are you planning to fund the growth of your business? Will you need loans? Do you have savings in place to take care of that? Are you seeking investments from investors? Um, or have you sat down and talked with the Small Business Administration about their loans um, in, in planning for loans and investment, investor um, monies? Keep in mind the repayment terms and you are a small business and you are growing. So make sure that if you do seek loans or investment help, that you are able to meet those repayment terms. Also monthly expenses, such as the kitchen space that you're, you're planning to rent. Um, do you have a kitchen that you can use that's already commercially um, permitted and inspected? Um, are you planning to use the commissary space? Um, are you planning to rent a kitchen? Other monthly expenses include payroll, equipment expenses, food and supply budgets. Um, uh, other services you might need like internet or Wi-Fi, website hosting fees, um, merchant fees, um, other expenses outside of that might be pest control, maintenance and repairs, office supplies, banking fees. When doing your business plan and, and your financial planning, be sure to include all expenditures to accurately estimate the amount of money needed to keep your business alive for at least two years. Number four, common commercial kitchen pitfall, not having a standard oper operating procedure in place. Not having an SOP in place can lead to poor management, poor performance, and lack of control of your operations. Following an SOP can set standards, develop consistent rules, and streamline processes of core operations. 
Uh, you should have rules set in place for your day-to-day -day operations that your employees, also um, anybody that you put in place to work in your kitchen can follow easily. Um, these rules need to be put in place so that your product can be produced uh, more eff effectively so that you have low waste, low theft, overall operation of your business runs smoothly. Number five, untrained staff. Staffing can be a struggle for small business owners. Staff should be selected carefully because these are the people that would be helping you to achieve your dream. Untrained, inconsistent, bad attitudes, and staff that does not abide by regulations set by the department can ruin your business. Business should have a certified food safety manager on site to make sure all food safety guidelines are met. All staff it should be food safety trained and follow all rules set by the department. That training includes um, hand washing, um, how to sanitize equipment, how to sanitize workspace, how to store food properly, how to store heated food properly, how to cool food property properly. All of that training, um, your employees, also your, your certified food safety managers should know, and those procedures should be followed daily. Um, if you have um, staff in place or a certified food safety manager in place that does not follow those rules, then your business is in jeopardy. Number six, now this one is a big one, selecting the wrong kitchen or the wrong commissary kitchen. Selecting the proper workspace should always be on the top of your important list. This is literally where you will be making your money. There are a few options when selecting the kitchen workspace. You can select um, what's becoming more common and um, more in use these days is the shared commissary kitchen because this space is most affordable for small businesses that are just starting out. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me, the uh, preferred option by I'm sure by many would be the private commercial commercial kitchen. This kitchen is the most convenient is also the most expensive. Um, this this option is um, you know, by far what everybody wants because you have your own space. You don't have to fight for storage. There's no scheduling conflicts. Uh, so if this is something that you can afford, then this would be the number one option for anybody in the food service business. Mm -hmm. Restaurant kitchens. Payment arrangements, contracts um, would be made privately between the restaurant owner and the business owner. The downside to this option is that you would be limited to working um, when the restaurant is closed or if the uh, restaurant owner has um, hours set aside for you to use. Option number four would be um, kitchens such as uh, churches, social clubs, private schools, Many of these places have commercial kitchens in place. They have been permitted and inspected. They may be willing to rent that space to you, as in with the restaurant commercial kitchen payment and contract arrangements are made between the space owner, the space owner and the business owner. Um, the downside to this option is finding kitchens um, such as this one are, are hard to find. Um, if you can find one, it, it could be quite affordable for you, especially if it's a social organization or a church. Keep in mind when selecting a commercial kitchen workspace, select a well-established commissary or commercial kitchen that has been permitted, that is regularly inspected and has documented documentation showing so, showing that they have passed inspections um, by the regulatory agency. Once your annual fee is paid, this is where you will be doing business for the year. Selecting the wrong commercial kitchen can be costly for you because you would have to go through the commissary agreement process again with another, another facility. Select a space that is large enough for you and your employees to work comfortably. Select a space that is clean, the restrooms are clean, it's pest-free, you don't see any evidence of leaks, and is in general, general overall good condition. Know how to use all your commercial grade equipment. Select 
selecting an incomplete workspace, workspace um, where you don't have all the equipment that you need or that they are um, improving the space and they have some equipment, not enough. Um, they might have some storage, not enough storage. They might have some refrigerators, not enough refrigeration space for um, everybody. Uh, make sure that everything in the kitchen is what you need. Um, if a space does not have a piece of equipment um, that you need, talk to the commissary kitchen owner and see if there's a, a, a um, space rental that you might be able to put that piece of equipment in. Keep in mind that some private kitchen owners are not going to allow you to bring in a large um, outside piece of equipment. So uh, if there is something special that you need, um, the private commercial kitchen might be your might be the option for you. Select a space that has adequate cold, hot, dry, and dry food storage for your needs. Location. You'll be coming back and forth to this commissary or kitchen. So you will want a, a central location that's either close to home or close to where you'll be doing business. This keeps fuel, fuel costs low. Um, it makes restocking easier and cleanup easier. Layout. Make sure the layout of the commercial kitchen is workable for you. Make sure that the prep spaces are free and clear of, of obstructions. Make sure they're trash recept receptacles in places that you need them that are in, they're convenient, but they're in places uh, set by the re regulatory agencies and authorities. If a commissary kitchen is selected, keep in mind that you will be sharing this space with others and you will be subject to things out of your control such as others cleaning habits or improper storage or even theft. Also keep in mind um, working in a commissary kitchen that you might that space might not be available when you need it. You'll be working on a schedule with other people. Also um, additional expenses that might come with a, a commissary kitchen are uh, locked dry storage or locked cold storage, hot storage, more like a cold storage or dry storage shelf space uh, might be an additional expense. If you have other storage items, those items might also be at, a, at an additional expense for storage. When selecting a commissary or a kitchen, what other amenities might that space offer? Uh, most, some, some commissary kitchens um, such as the French Town Neighborhood Improvement Association might offer um, business trainings. Some might offer overnight, overnight parking for people that have food trucks uh, and some may offer grant um, assistance programs. So just speak to the uh, commissary and see what other amenities might be offered for you that might make this space more attractive than another. Number seven, unprepared, being unprepared for cooking in a commercial space. You're, you'll be cooking in a commercial space now. So this is the working in a commercial space is much different than working um, in a small home setting. Commercial grade equipment is larger, the mixers are larger. So the recipes will have to be upsized to accommodate the size of the equipment that you'll be using in order to reduce re replication of efforts um, so that you're not mixing the same batch of um, whatever it is, you mix it six times when you could have only done it once. So um, a few things you need to be, be prepared for um, would be purchasing your food in bulk, um, your food and purchasing your food and supplies in bulk. You need to be prepared for storage of food um, and supplies in bulk. You need to increase your food and your supply budget. Um, a pitfall is using cheap or inferior ingredients, not purchasing your food from um, trusted or um, purchasing food from unknown suppliers, um, not using food grade supplies when needed, um, everything that comes in contact with food, needs to be food grade, not ordering enough food or supplies. You're running out halfway through um, trying to do a, a productive business month. That's not productive. 
ordering too much food and supplies. If you don't need two years worth of supplies, that just takes money out of um, takes money out of your working budget that you might need to put somewhere else. Ordering too much food that will spoil quickly is a waste. You won't get to use those items. So um, keep in mind how much you're ordering, and you can do that by um, moderate, mo monitoring, excuse me, your inventory on a regular basis. Have a process in place to monitor your inventory so you know what you have and you know what you need to use quickly. Number eight, keeping an unclean, unorganized workspace. Uncleanliness is an unacceptable in a food service business. Regulations are set by the department that must be abided by in order to reduce pests and foodborne illnesses. Organization is key to running a smooth workday. Place ingredients, equipment, and all other supplies in a convenient but appropriate space um, so that you know, you know where everything is. It's, it saves time and it, it eliminates frustration um, when you're trying to produce or um, if you're in the middle of a busy lunch rush, you can't be running around trying to find your food or your, your packing supplies. Everything needs to be clean and, and organized. Number nine, inconsistency. Inconsistency in service, inconsistency in pricing, inconsistency in your product can lead to issues establishing your business brand and building your customer loyalty. If you're inconsistent with your hours and people are showing up to your, your space and or your place of business and you aren't there when you, sh you should be, um, people are gonna stop coming. If your prices continually go up because you have ineffectively priced your products or ineffectively priced your food or supplies or ineffectively planned um, for producing your product and your prices keep going up, 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 you're gonna lose a following. If you change your product, if people come because they love this product that you're producing, they love it, they're coming back repeatedly for it. And then in the middle of that, you decide that you're going to buy inferior ingredients from an untrusted supplier and now you have to use it. Your product has changed and your customers don't like it. So um, be consistent in all ways with your product, your service, and your pricing in order to build the loyalty that you want from your customers. Number 10, marketing. Your business, is, your business is needed when marketing your business is needed when working from a commissary kitchen. You won't have the luxury of having a private storefront with your business name on it. Creating visibility, visibility for your business will be all up to you. Decide if this is a task that you wanna take on yourself. Decide if you have enough money in your budget to hire a professional marketing firm. Whatever the option is that you choose, marketing your business will lead to new customers, loyal customers, brand awareness, and increase in profits. Because your name won't be on the side of the building that you'll be producing your product in. The visibility that a company has from that alone, you will not have that. You will have to have a solid marketing plan. You'll have to have a plan in place so that people know where you are doing business. Your website needs to be up to date. Um, you need to do regular posting. If you're a mobile, um, a mobile business, people need to know where to find you. Also, this is where consistency, consistency plays a role. Make sure that you are marketing your business appropriately for working in a commissary business. Maybe one day after working you know, hard and putting it in, you, you will be able to have a private building with your name on the side of it. But until then, you need to market your business as if you did. In summary, although we cannot be prepared for everything in life that might go wrong, preparing your business from the beginning for pitfalls saves time, energy, and money. Thank you all for listening, listening and good luck in all of your endeavors. Thank you. Have a great day.